Hello again. In this uh, video, I will explain you how can we manage with the problem of the UNDAP excited vibration. Uh, excited vibration is some kind of the problems uh, where the elastic system has some extra uh, load due to the external force. Okay, let's write it down. It means it will be about an damped excited vibration of single degree of freedom systems. Okay, and we will be considering almost exactly the same problem like last time, like in the previous material, previous video. It will be sprung mass with the value of, of that mass M and the stiffness K. What is the difference? We will introduce some extra external force F0 times sine capital omega T. Okay, and we know that if we want to manage with such a problem, quite good technique is the Lagrangian mechanics, number of degrees of freedom is exactly equal. One, the nice coordinate is x velocity x q dot x dot. We have to formulate the Lagrangian Euler equation. Of course, we have to introduce our genus coordinate. We'll do it in the moment. It will be, let's say, exactly as our excitation. Lagrange function, Lagrangian, it will be 1 over 2 mass x dot squared due to the kinetic energy minus 1 over 2 k x squared due to the elastic potential energy. And what about the external excitation, it will be connected with the Q. And for such simple case, if the facing of the coordinate is the same as the facing of the force, it will be exactly that force F of T. It means it will be F0 times sine omega T. Okay, let's start with the process of the differentiation. It means that from the first step we will get as a result inertia force if my computation are too fast for you let's check the previous videos due to the second component we have minus kx and as we stated q it's f0 sine omega t and as a final form of our solution we have that it's a inertial force is equal to minus uh, m times sorry not minus my uh, m times x double dot minus minus it's plus i mean the plus k x equal equals f zero sine omega t okay and we in that way we got the governing equation of our undapped excited system and that we see uh, it's really similar to the problem of the free vibration but the difference is we in the right hand side and the classification of such a problem is that it's a non-homogeneous uh, linear second order differential equation with the constant coefficient the difference that it's a non-homogeneous it makes uh, that it's a little bit more complicated, but the approach is similar. It means that we have to make it free. I mean that the highest derivative has to be free. I mean we will divide the whole equation by m. It means we will get here omega 0 squared times x and here we have f0 over m times sine omega t. Okay, and that thing we will denote, I mean f0 over m will be denoted, I denote it as a small f0 and the unit of that thing it will be meters over square 2 I mean something which has the form of the acceleration okay it means that we have that the acceleration of the system plus omega 0 square times x is a let's say excitation if the, in the form of the acceleration it is our 
equation, governing equation of our undapped excited system. Okay, and due to the theory of the, the non-homogeneous uh, differential equation, we know that the whole solution of that problem is a sum of the homogeneous part, of the general solution of the homogeneous part, I mean it's that solution which we uh, got last time, plus one particular solution of non-homogeneous part. Okay, and if we're talking about the homogeneous part, it's quite easy because last time we stated that it will be d1 sine omega t plus d2 times cosine omega t. If we are talking about the non-homogeneous part, I mean the particular solution uh, of, the, of that dependent variable, uh, we have to use some different approach. Oh, sorry, my bad, because I want it to be too fast. Look, it's a solution of the homogeneous part. It means that it's connected with the solution when the right hand side is exactly zero. Okay, it means that for that case we have to consider such a problem. I mean x double prime plus omega zero square times x equals zero. It's homogeneous equation. And that is why here we have the problem. It's omega zero square times t, omega zero square times t. Okay, let's continue with the non-homogeneous equation. X I mean particular solution of the homogeneous part. Due to the method of the prediction, we know that if the right-hand side has a form of the trigonometric function or harmonic function, then solution of the hom on an homogeneous equation has to be predicted as a linear combination of the sine and cosine function with exactly the same frequency as in case of uh, our left right hand side. It means it will be some unknown a times sine omega t plus some unknown constant b times cosine omega t. Okay, if it's our solution of our entire problem, we have to find the two derivatives and then we will be able to put it inside our system. Okay, first thing, firstly, we have that the first derivative it will be omega a times cosine omega t minus b omega sine omega t here we have the first derivative and the second derivative is minus omega square a times sine omega t minus omega oh sorry omega square capital omega square times b times cosine omega t as a derivative of the sine. Okay, and now if we have those three derivatives, we are able to put it inside our non-homogeneous equation. Okay, and what we get as a result? It will be minus omega square, capital omega square times a times sine omega t uh, minus omega square b times cosine omega t, here we have the second derivative plus omega zero, zero square times our x, it means a sine omega t plus b cosine omega t. Here we have our x. Maybe I will put subscripts non-homogeneous and non homogeneous and here we have the right hand side I mean f0 times sine omega t. Now we, have, we are able to regroup the elements okay and we see that here we have the sine and the sine is here here we have the cosine and the same component here it means we have to we are able to take the common factors and it will be minus maybe in that form it will be omega 0 square uh, minus um, capital omega square times a times sine uh, omega t and exactly the same as in case of the cosine I mean look we have the same component I mean the same common factor omega 0 square minus 
omega, capital omega square times b times cosine omega t. Okay? And as a right hand side, we have the f0 sine omega t. Okay, and it's a really similar equation like we have in the case of the um, harmonic synthesis analysis. I mean, we have identity between a linear combination of the sine and cosine and uh, that right hand side which has also the form of the linear combination of the sine and cosine. Of course, cosine is not visible on the right hand side, but we always are able to put zero here, I mean to add to the zero without change of the value of the entire equation. It means I, I, I'm able to put here zero times cosine omega t because it will be exactly the same. And based on that thing, we see that again, he will have the blue component and he will have that blue component. And on the right hand side, we see red component and the same component, I mean the appropriate component for that thing, corresponding component for that thing, it's here. It means if we want to get a proper result, I mean we want to fulfill that equality for every single value of t, we have to fulfill such a condition. I mean omega 0 square minus omega capital omega square times a has to be equal f0 and omega 0 square minus capital omega square times b has to be equal 0. It means that from that system of the linear equation we are getting that the b is 0 and a is f0 over omega 0 square minus omega square. It means that the non-homogeneous solution I mean, in sometimes which is called particular solution of entire problem will be given as the form of f0 omega 0 square minus omega square times sine capital omega t. And the entire solution of the problem, I mean the general solution of the non-homogeneous problem, it will be the sum between solution of the homogeneous equation, I mean sine omega 0 t plus d2 cosine omega 0 t plus that component connected with the excitation f0 omega 0 square minus omega square times sine omega t. What is important here? Look guys, that part is limited because we know that sine and cosine are limited by the one and minus one, okay? It means that that thing will have some limited values. But in that case, if the omega zero, sorry, if the omega, capital omega, goes to the omega zero as a limit, we will get infinite number. It means that that expression will go to the infinity for such a condition. I mean, if the capital omega goes to omega zero, then f zero over omega zero square minus omega square goes to the, inf to the plus infinity. And that thing, that problem, the name of that phenomenon is called the resonance. The curve which describes the dependency between the frequency of the excitation and the amplitude of the dynamic response of the system will be as follows. It means here we have such a thing. It means that for the omega zero, the values of the vibration are unlimited. And that fact, it's really, really dangerous if we are talking about the problems connected with the vibration. And if we want to design some system, we have to be careful of that phenomenon. Thank you for your attention. See you next time. Bye.